if you don't, if you wait till last minute, you're not gonna get it started out. That's why you gotta plan in advance and source everything. You might not find it the same time, but you're gonna find it even at the last minute. You can find it. So a lot of preparation for finding the hard uh, find materials. Depending on the cost, we will find the materials that you need here. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Everybody should cosplay. Anybody should cosplay whatever the heck they want. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if it's skin color. I cosplay non Asian characters all the time. I cosplay tall characters all the time. I'm very short. Let me just say that actually is a big issue here in the Caribbean. Is it? Yeah. No, it is. Size and skin color. <laughs> Size and skin color in terms of cosplay because there, there's a lot of people who feel that if they don't look like the character, that they can't pull it off. And obviously, in the Caribbean, you have um, a lot of yeah, people. yeah, yeah. And you get when you go online and stuff, and you see wow. the hateful comments that people make. It is it is an issue and it is difficult. And I'm here to say seriously, if you love a character, go for it and do it. It doesn't even matter if you're here, blonde, black, whatever. <laughs> Uh, sure. For me, cosplay is its a way to express how much you love the character. There is nothing different between cosplaying a character and wearing a t-shirt with that character's face on it. There is nothing different between cosplaying and collecting a figure of a character, or watching the anime, or wearing a, a baseball cap with the logo, or anything. It's, it's just another way for you to show that you like something. And that is why it does not matter what you look like, and it does not matter if you look like the character. So don't let people get you down. I mean, I, I understand what you're talking about. It's an issue back in the States. I think it's an issue just about anywhere. And it's just, it's a constant fight against it, because there is a lot of hateful comments out there, and people just don't understand. So, constant vigilance. It's really our inspiration. <laughs> But, um, it's great to meet them. Never thought that we would actually get to meet them. So it's actually a wonderful experience to get to know new people and those are, that are also well known as well. Well, funny enough, um, I um, met JM online last year, I think, for an interview for Alias Magazine. So I knew him, but I only just met Miss <laughs> So yeah, I can't really speak to that in that sense, but I do, I am really grateful for Mel and Omar and all those guys for bringing these guys down here because I think it's something that definitely needed. If I may add something, uh... <laughs> <laughs> maybe not, maybe not, yeah. yeah. I, was just, um, I feel like Cosplay is such a global phenomenon now, and uh, for me to travel to conventions, I it, I really see it as a way to connect with cosplayers in other cultures, because no matter what culture we're from, we love the same thing. And I think that really is, you know, it, it crosses languages, it crosses, you know, uh, just it crosses borders, it crosses oceans, and um, so, I feel like bringing international cosplayers in is not technically a way to be like, oh, they're celebrities, you have to fawn all over them. It really is like to get to know what cosplay is like in another country. You know, like I, I really like telling people, this is what cosplay is like in the US. This is what cosplay is like in Japan. You know, this is what cosplay is like in Europe. For people to understand better how they develop and for me to come to Barbados to see a growing cosplay community and to learn about the Caribbean cosplayers and the Alias Magazine, this is really great for me because I can take this information back to the US and I can tell them, guess what, there is a growing community in Barbados. And people in the US are gonna be like, what? <laughs> like, really, people cosplay there? And it's like, yeah, it's, it's fantastic because we all share the same thing. Picking a character, usually for me, I would like, if I have a connection for it, I have a love for like classic animes that don't show anymore, like, you know, like, Big O, Outlaw Star, the original Gundam Wing, yeah. like that sort of stuff. So those remind me and feel 
for cosplaying. Though I haven't started any of those yet, I'm working on them like, for after Anime Con, so I'll work on those then. Um, basically, for Caribbean cosplayers, when it was when that was first founded, it was before Anime Con came up, like probably like a month or so before it came up. So that was my plan, and along with a friend of mine, to try and see who in the local community would love cosplaying as much as we would. So that same and the on year, because that was the, I think it was the first, it was the first or the second year for sure. That has been we got together. Like they weren't all the best, but they were still legitimate cosplayers. Like from the Grim Man and <laughs> they had like Mikul Hatsune, those were like the first cosplayers for us. So right now the group is still in development and this year, last year's group cosplay was the Aspalus from Bleach. So there was like, you know, like. They had like Tia Harry Bell, they had her fraction, there was um, Soi Pong, uh, and Nell as well. And uh, for this year, is the theme for Caribbean cosplayers was DC versus Marvel. Mm. So we have like, right now we have like Pop Girl, we have Power Girl, we have Valkyrie, we have a few others as well. Um, face. So that's it for right now. Um, yeah. There are times that I would look at a character design in and of itself and just be like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I need to do that. <laughs> Recently, I don't even play LOL, but that needly headhunter thing, I'm doing that. <laughs> like, next year, for sure. Don't know anything about the character, but I mean, in preparing for a character like that, whose design has won me over more than the actual character, I would then start doing research on it, so that obviously when I do the poses and everything, that then I'm in character. But when I initially started cosplaying, I had what I would call a bit of an obsession with Samurai X. Yeah. <laughs> now we're not one piece. Yeah, my mom was, was worried for me. She was, because on the back of my wardrobe, I would like, in chalk, write out like the names of all the characters and their moves, and I had a problem. I even had a file. But yeah, I had a serious issue. So that was my first cosplay. I was in love with Kenshi, in complete, uh, flail, flail, flail. Yeah, and um, one year I saw a girl, she did the Kenshi version of it, and I was like, nah, nah, you cannot represent my character like this. So. The next year, I just decided to do the Hitokiri Bato side, and that was how I got into cosplay. So my process, as I would say, would be a mix between the love of the character and the character design. And if I may actually, funny story, this costume was, um, JM, you were the one. Yes, he's responsible for <laughs> this costume. I was talking to him, and he was like, I think you should do Nikar up, and I was like, but I don't watch One Piece. So he got me hooked on One Piece. This is all his fault. Now you're loving, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're all grateful. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically love of character and the intricacy of it. I have cosplayed um, over 250 characters, so it's, it, it really is, I, it's a huge range. Um, and uh, when I first started, it, I had obviously very limited skills. I didn't know how to sew. I didn't know how to style wigs. I didn't know how to make anything. And uh, so I was limited to what I was able to actually create. So I started off with uh, very simple characters like Ibrea from Parasite Eve or Sharon Apple from Macross Plus. Um, because obviously, I, of course, I felt a connection to the characters. I was a fan of the um, video game and um, the anime. And, uh, but most importantly, I thought that I could imagine myself as that character. I think it's very important for a cosplayer to feel inside that they, they can imagine what it's like to walk around as the character, to look like the character, and uh, to be in that costume. And I think the way I 
still choose my costumes, it, it's still that same like, you know, it's like this weird little magical click that happens in my head where I'm just like, that would be really cool to be this character for a day. Um, obviously, over the years, I have gained a lot of skills, I've honed a lot of skills, and um, been able to expand the range of costumes that I could do. And I, 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 for me, it's almost like leveling up in a video game where you collect experiences and you know you do some you know whatever you can, and then once you learn a new, a new skill, you level up, and all of a sudden, you know how to make you know a corset, or you know how to style the crap out of a wig or you know how to make a sword and so your range all of a sudden becomes a little bigger and uh, you can go after making costumes that you know when you first started you weren't able to because you didn't have the skills. Uh, for me a dream costume that I've wanted to do since the movie came out was Carmilla from the Empire of the D. So in 2000 <laughs> One year after I started cosplaying, the movie came out. I was like, there's no way I can make that costume. It wasn't even in my wildest dreams. Fast forward nine years later, all of a sudden it was like, okay, I think I know how I would go about making this costume. And so I think that's very important as a cosplayer to um, express what you love, be the characters that you love, have fun with it, but also see it as a creative challenge. And so now, um, because cosplay is so artistic for me, it is such a, uh, it's such a way for me to find zen and find like real peace when I'm working on a costume, that I will choose costumes now, sometimes based on the craftsmanship challenge, not just if I love the character. And there, for example, Misato, this is a great example. I love Evangelion. I watched, I anticipated and watched Evangelion with my anime club when it first came out. Like, when it first was released in Japan. And came over a subversion, where we were just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> freaking out about it. Um, I never really clicked with Rei, never really clicked with Asuka, and uh, for me, Misato, she was, she was a badass, she was a cool chick, she would, you know, uh, be awesome and then like drink beer and she had like her own issues and I really liked the complexity of her character but her costume her outfit you know the black dress with the red jacket is very simple and so it never I never was drawn to it but then when I realized that a company made a figure of Misato in a plug suit style dress I was like all right this means I get to cosplay Misato, I get to make a plug suit type outfit, and it's a creative challenge on top of it, it's a craftsmanship challenge. So sometimes it takes a little while, but you find the right combination that drives you to make a costume.